Hi, this video is about the glass features of the Standard Plus shader. I have my second demo scene here, and this time it contains some more objects, all of them made of glass. I have two bottles here, a whiskey glass and two wine glasses. This one here has the default shader applied to it, so let's create our own glass material. Right click, create material. Let's name it New Glass, and by default, Unity chooses the standard shader to it. So let's click on the drop down list, choose the standard plus item here on the list, and inside of it, we can see all the shaders that come with the package. And let's choose this one here, the standard plus glass. And the difference between these two is just the workflow mode, the PBR workflow mode. This one is the metallic workflow, and this one is the specular workflow, just like Unity's own standard shaders. And I like to work with the metallic workflow, so let's choose this one. And by the way, you can see there's another kind of glass here, the glass full. And this one I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Okay, let me assign the material to the object. Now, here at the inspector panel, apart from the logo, you can see that Everything is pretty much the same as the standard material. But if you see down here, you can see the plus features. There is the plus glass and the plus light maps, because you can also use the custom light maps with this standard plus glass. First of all, let's drop the alpha to zero. By default, it is one. So let's make it transparent or perhaps not so much transparent. And let's turn the smoothness to one because glass reflections are pretty sharp. Now you can immediately see the refractions on the glass and that's because the refraction defaults to one. But this kind of glass here is a thin glass. It doesn't need so much refraction. So let's put it back to zero. Now this is more or less what you get with the standard material. It's transparent, has reflections, but it lacks a couple of things to be more realistic. Well, one of those things is refraction, of course, but a glass like this with various amounts of thickness here at the body, it is thin here. It is thicker. You can't have just one refraction value. This is where we can use the thickness map, which is a map that, as the name implies, shows where are the thin and thick parts of your objects. And you can create this map using your 3D package or on a software like Substance Painter, for instance. It is essentially an ambient occlusion map, but instead of shooting the rays to the outside of the object, it shoots to the inside. So wherever you have some thin part in your object, it gets dark on the map. This is the one I created in 3ds Max with the Corona renderer. And you can see here that the body of the glass is dark because it's just a thin wall. And here at the bottom, you can see it's much brighter because it's the support. So let's plug it in here. You can't see any difference because the refraction is set to zero. So let's turn it up a little. So you can see the refraction here is stronger than up here because this is a much thinner glass. Now, what we have here are two toggles. These toggles control whether or not your thickness map will affect the refraction and, and the color. So if I uncheck this one, look, now you got the same refraction throughout the object and the same with the color. Let me put a color here. So now this is a green glass. And as you can see, the thickness map dictates where the color is more saturated as it happens in real life. But if I don't want that behavior, I just uncheck this so I can have a, a uniform color. But you don't have to be super precise in your thickness map uh, with the gray values because you can adjust them here. You have these controls, the refraction levels and the color levels. These controls are essentially like the Photoshop levels and you can control the in and out uh, dark and bright values, as well as the middle gamma here. So you can fine tune the refraction of your objects. And the same thing applies to the color. So pretty much the values of your thickness map are independent for the color and the refraction. Now, 
here at the bottom you have the Fresnel amount because what happens is when you look at glass let's let's focus on this uh, wine glass here when you look at it from the front you're seeing directly ahead of you a thin glass okay but if you begin to look at the border you're seeing more and more glass because it is curved so you see more glass the glass at the front and the glass at the back so it will bend the light more and as you can see right now it's the same thing look at the back look at the refraction you see no difference the background goes and it's not affected it's not distorted and that's that's not real so you have to use these Fresnel effects this one is the Fresnel amount, which is uh, similar to the ref uh, refraction amount, and they are separate from each other. You can have a, a zero refraction amount up here and another uh, Fresnel amount here. And you have this Fresnel length. The Fresnel length is how much this effect will go up to the front of the glass. It will be just at the border here, or it will go much further to the front of the glass. So you can tweak this however you like. The last parameter you can tweak is the blur amount. So when you click here, the enable blur, you'll be presented with this blur amount, which as the name says, blurs your refraction. It is a very simple blur, so you can use this even on, on mobile. It is intended to be just a suggestion of, of blur because when you go too high here on the blur amount you can see the separation of the multiple samples of the background texture. Perhaps on a future update I'll enable a more uh, expensive uh, blur but I think this is already very good. I modeled this to be used in conjunction with the smoothness map. How? When you plug a smoothness map, let me plug it here. So when you plug it this this smoothness map here has a lot of fingerprints and as with fingerprints they will turn down your smoothness they will make the material uh, more rough and not only that the grease on the fingerprints will blur the refraction behind so that's why you can use these both things in conjunction and I made another map here for the alpha as well. So wherever you have your fingerprints, I increase the alpha a little bit more so you can better see the fingerprints. And now when I adjust the blur amount, you see it is only affecting the parts where the fingerprints are. And what you can do with the alpha map here is what I did with the bottles. Each one of the bottles have just one material. This is, this is all a glass material, a single glass material, and it has a map for the opacity. This part here for the label, it is the glass material just with the, uh, the alpha set to 1. It will behave like a normal opaque material. Okay, now let me talk about the drawbacks of the simple standard plus glass. The refraction works by grabbing a copy of the background scene before rendering the object. So it grabs a copy of the scene and distorts it. So instead of every object grabbing a copy of the screen and distorting it, the simple plus glass here will grab one copy and this will be used for every object that uses the standard plus glass material. So as you can imagine this is much more performant. Problem is you won't see any other standard plus glass behind your object because they use the same background texture. Look at here. It's, <laughs> it's really strange, right? You can see the wine because the wine uh, is an opaque material, but the rest is gone. So you have to use the standard plus glass only when you don't have to see other glasses behind your objects. And there are a lot of situations when you won't have to see another glass behind it. So by all means, use this shader. Now, if you want the full effect, if you want a realistic glass that you can see everything behind it, use the standard plus full glass which is this shader here. The full glass is almost exactly like the plus glass shader. It has the same functionalities, but the main difference is that you can see everything behind. It's a more uh, expensive shader because as I said before, each object using this shader will take a copy of the background and distort it. So keep this in mind and use it wisely. On the other hand, as you can see other refractive objects behind your current material, you can render complex objects like this whiskey glass here, which has a lot of objects. It has six materials and they all refract everything that is behind each one. 
But to render an object like this, you have to understand the concept of the render queue. The setting here. It is a number that tells the graphics card which object, which material to draw first. The objects with the higher numbers are rendered on top of the others. So here in this glass, I have separated the interior of the glass, the exterior part. I have these ice cubes here, the liquid, and you can see here, they are all set to a different render queue, beginning with the object further away from the camera, the interior part of the glass here. It has the render queue 3000, and you see here, let's see the liquid. Liquid has 3002, the eyes 3003, and the exterior glass here 3004, which will be drawn on top of everything else. If you don't set the different render queues here, and you set all of them to 3000, for instance, sometimes the GPU gets confused on what to draw first, and you will see things that are meant to be drawn on top of everything being drawn at the back, and vice versa. So please use this number, and that's it. This is pretty much what I wanted to explain about the Standard Plus Glass and Standard Plus Glass Full. So, on the next video, I'll talk about the Standard Plus translucency features. Thank you.